Okay, we're going to talk about Canada geese, and, and uh, one of the things we have to point out right away about Canada geese is that recently they were split, and so what traditionally we thought of as Canada geese are now split into two different species, Canada geese and cackling geese. But even before that, we knew that Canada geese could differ greatly. We we recognized like 13 subspecies or more in some cases for some biologists. So we had all this differentiation among Canada geese, and yet mallards, you know, a duck that occurs pretty much all over the world, mallards are mallards. So why Canada geese form these different subspecies, some of which weigh 18 pounds when, at, you know, at, at largest, and some Canada geese are just barely bigger than a mallard. And the reason is that they both winter and summer as distinct units. So, as a result of that, a Canada goose mates with somebody that's from his area or her area. And therefore you can get differentiation among groups. So the Canada geese in the prairies were big. It was an advantage to be a big goose because then you could beat up the predators that are coming to your nest. But for the Arctic, you need to be a small goose so you grow quickly and you can deal with those short summers. Or, or so you, you can't beat up the predators, so there's no point in being large. So in local areas, you got basically selection, advantages for being bigger or smaller, and Canada goose could respond. But for mallards, they get all mixed up because they breed on in the north, but they all go down and mix up in the winter and, and they form pair bonds in the winter. So that's why Canada geese can have all these subspecies. And uh, and in fact, with through modern DNA analysis, we've decided that Canada geese should really be two different geese, Canada's and cackling geese. But from a management standpoint, Canada's have been remarkably successful. Um, it's pretty clear we shot too many of them in the early uh, 1900s and on it on up to sort of the start of modern wildlife management. But then when we got a, some controls on harvest, now we can manage Canada geese really well. And in fact, Canada's are continue to increase. We've got Canada geese breeding in North Dakota when they weren't even here 25 years ago. So, so they've really expanded, uh, doing really well. They're big enough that they can defend against nest predators, so they have high nest success. And if you don't shoot too many of them in the winter, then uh, they have high survival. So we can really manage Canada geese well. We can, in fact, manage Canada geese by populations. This group that lives here uh, in southern Manitoba, we know that they where they winter, and so we just have to set the hunting regulations uh, to, at the appropriate level. We've gotten really good at goose management. Uh, really quite interesting. They're unlike ducks in that you get biparental care. That is, both males and females care for the young. Now during incubation, it's only females that are incubating, and obviously only females lay eggs, but the males during the brood rearing period really serve a, a distinctive role. When some danger approaches, it's the male's job to either go up and beat up the danger, uh, if it's small, or if it's large, the male does a distraction display. He acts like he's got a broken wing and draws the coyote or the raccoon off, and the female takes the goslings and goes the other way. And so, uh, uh, real clear biparental care in, in Canada geese, as opposed to all of our ducks, which only the females care for the eggs once they're, they're laid. One of the interesting things about Canada geese is they've actually become far too successful in a lot of areas. We uh, we got good at reintroducing Canada geese into areas where they've been uh, basically uh, shot out of existence, and uh, and we introduced Canada geese, or they spread themselves, um, and now we have them in areas where if they're not hunted and we don't have some control on the population, they just become too abundant. So lots of cities uh, all throughout the east, Minneapolis, it's hard to name a, a Midwestern northern city that doesn't have a Canada goose issue and that they have to deal with some way or another. Uh, in some places they round them up and harvest them and, and they're food for local soup kitchens. Um, in other places they try and export them. But export is becoming a problem because nowadays not too many places want to 
uh, when I have Canada geese shipped to them. So in the old days, we used to take the Canada geese from one site and move them to some place that didn't have them. But now they've spread so effectively that that uh, they're pretty much everywhere.